We're here with John Chambers, the legendary CEO of Cisco. We're very fortunate to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you, and this is quite a product. I love your test. Thank cats. you so much. Uh -huh. we're, we're here at uh, Edison's lab through the magic of such gas. We've been transported, <laughs> and wanted to ask you what you felt was the impact that Edison had on innovation in general and on the tech field specifically. I think Edison uh, laid a foundation on many years in terms of what's possible with innovation. It wasn't just the 1,093 patents, U.S. patents he got. It was the process that he used, the creativeness of taking an idea and bringing it through to commercialization. And that came is exactly what I modeled after. We, we come up with ideas at Cisco. We try to get market transitions right. Don't focus on the competitors. Focus on what is the end outcome that you want, commercialization, and building a replicatable process. So I think he taught many of us, here we are a century later. You think still he kind of taught it. us how to do R&D in, in the context of a company in some way? Uh, I would say absolutely, but more important than R&D, he taught us to come up with a creative idea that could really dramatically change things, to have the courage to reach out and take risk, and to do almost the impossible. He also taught us, as you do this, you've got to say what is the commercialization of it. And then, whether he wrote about it or not, he was really good at a replicatable process, all of which came is exactly what we do at Cisco for our innovation, and it's what allowed us to acquire 180 companies, it's what's allowed us to have 18 product categories that have 40% plus market share in each category. Uh, it's how we are known for digitizing countries and cities and companies. It's taking that R&D, if you will, the idea, to its real practical implications. And the ability to fail, is that something that you see in your culture as well? It's huge because uh, everybody writes about your successes and they get really excited about it. I would argue uh, people who have been fortunate enough really to be creative in life and to really change uh, dramatically their businesses or inventions, etc., also also had a number of setbacks. And I think you're more a product of your setbacks than you are even of your successes, even though nobody writes about it. So you have to be willing to fail, to have missteps, that makes you stronger later. Learn from them, but don't spend a lot of time looking back. Right, so when you look at those 170 acquisitions, you think you have a good bat record of success and a good healthy bat record of failure? Is that part of the course? Well, we went in knowing that 90% of acquisitions would fail in high tech, and they do. Right. Uh, and what we do is we hit about two thirds of ours have been successful. Now, having said that, I still get beat up on the ones that fail. Of course. Yeah, much more than the successes, but you have to realize that failure is part of innovation. And if you're really going to lead and break away from your peers, whether it's changing society or changing business, you right. have to be willing to take the risk, which means periodically you will fail.